Expectations for a blue wave for Vice President Joe Biden are fading fast. Wednesday morning has seen a rise in the US dollar as the election result remains too close to call. So when will the next president of the United States be decided and what should we be anticipating from the markets? Joining me to discuss is Andreas Sitone, who is the head of strategy at TS Lombard. Now, just to be clear for our audience before we get going, um, this is a fast moving story, of course. We're recording this at 9.30 a.m on Wednesday morning. Andreas, great to chat to you. Now, we've seen that Biden's flipped Arizona, Trump's won Florida in terms of some of the battleground states. But overall, as I mentioned, it's too close to call. What have been some of the surprises for you overnight? Well, uh, the surprise was that uh, consensus was expecting a blue wave. Uh, we at TS Lombard never expected a blue wave. We called more of a a blue hue, uh, but nevertheless, a consensus was set on a blue wave and it didn't get it. So Trump made a speech overnight, essentially declaring victory, and he called the election a fraud on the American people. I mean, what do you make of some of the things he's been saying? Well, we know that Trump is uh, is quite inclined to making very strong statements. Uh, and uh, so that that's not entirely a surprise. Uh, what clearly is not uh, is not going according to plan, as far as the market is concerned, is that uh, the race is very close. It's too close to call at this time, uh, and uh, it might take a few days before we know the ultimate uh, winner of the election. And uh, we can be certain of one thing: is that markets do not like uncertainty. Uh, so all the worst case scenarios are opening up. You know that of a tie potentially. Uh, that of uh, prolonged uh, uh, arguing on uh, who the winner is. All of these things are keeping the markets on edge. Yeah, certainly a lot of nervousness and volatility in the markets. When we look at US futures, they're essentially uh, mixed after that strong rally that we saw yesterday. And it is a real nail biter that appears to be going down to the wire. Um, you mentioned that we certainly don't know the election result yet, and we don't quite know when. Give us a sense of when we might have a clearer picture. And what's your hunch as to who's going to emerge victorious? Well, uh, I'll stop short of making predictions uh, because it's uh, it's so hard. But of course, the, the path mm -hmm. to victory for Biden has narrowed quite considerably. Uh, he might still win Arizona, where he's ahead. But then Pennsylvania is the is the key battleground state. Uh, again, uh, the, the counting is still going on there. So we won't know for, for some time. But all the other states that remain are uh, leaning uh, towards Trump or uh, uh, anyway, that there's, a, there's a, a Trump advantage there. We quite a few votes having been counted already. So the path to victory, which seemed to be uh, a very easy one for Biden, has now uh, become quite narrow and, uh, and much less likely to materialize. Um, and uh, again, markets are now shifting their expectations. So before, when, when Biden was considered to be an easy winner, uh, the, uh, the, the expectations were that his fiscal stimulus plan, his government spending would lead eventually to rising inflation, uh, whereas Trump uh, is probably going to be more, um, uh, more, more focused on cutting taxes. So quite different uh, outcomes, despite both aiming for a large fiscal deficit uh, in, in the next year and, uh, and potentially beyond. So Trump said this morning, we want the law to be used in a proper manner. So we'll be going to the US Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. I mean, what does he mean here? What's the legal process that he's talking about and how might that play out? Well, from uh, what I've seen, uh, there are no solid legal grounds to uh, to get the vote stopped. Um, the vote needs to continue. And, uh, and of course, it might take some time. Uh, he clearly thinks that at this time, it looks like he's ahead and he wants to seize this opportunity, but probably the vote will have to come to, to its own natural conclusion before, uh, before any dispute might, uh, might even begin. Okay, so we've seen that the US dollar has been uh, rising a bit. I mean, what does that tell us that the market's pricing in in terms of outcomes? You alluded to the fiscal uh, package. Tell us what the different outcomes could mean in terms of um, the coronavirus um, relief bill. Right. So the coronavirus thing is uh, is very important. Uh, we know that uh, new contagion uh, cases are accelerating very fast in Europe. Uh, that's not quite been uh, the case in the United States, although uh, contagion is uh, is taking up 
uh, is they ticking up there as well. Um, of course, the uh, the way that the Trump administration has uh, dealt with the coronavirus crisis uh, has got a patched um, in a mixed uh, mixed track record. Um, so I guess that will be something that the markets will have to worry about. But for now, I think the big the big change has been this shift from um, uh, a market expecting a Biden win and therefore leaning towards uh, rotating into value uh, and towards something that looks uh, like a more likely uh, Trump win, uh, which means that growth is going to take leadership again. So these are the, the key uh, the key battlegrounds, if you want, uh, where the market uh, fight is going to be uh, is going to be fought. Now, when we look at uh, the markets, the Dow closed sharply higher on Tuesday, but it's a mixed picture in terms of U.S. futures today. What are you expecting from the market open at two thirty? I think this uh, this rotation from uh, from growth to value that has been taking place over the last couple of days uh, is going to have to be reassessed. So the big change this week compared to last week uh, is that last week the market was looking for for a new leadership in the market because uh, to some extent tech, which had been the leader uh, during the recovery, has kind of disappointed uh, with, with the results announced by Google, Apple, uh, and other large tech uh, companies. Um, it's not like the results were disappointing uh, for Q3. It was more like the lack of forward guidance or the mixed outlook that these companies have provided that have made investors reconsider, is this really uh, something we want to keep pushing further? Uh, so that, that's behind uh, the, the sell-off last week on top of uh, the, the acceleration of coronavirus cases in Europe. Uh, this week, the market's taken a different view. Uh, it started pricing in a blue wave. It started pricing in uh, aggressive government spending by a Biden-led administration, uh, which would lead in the, in the market size to, uh, to a higher risk of inflation uh, going forward. Uh, and that's why yields have been rising and rising yields uh, have led to banks doing better. So the leadership in the market has shifted from growth, which kind of disappointed last week, to value, uh, which was supposed to do better uh, on, under a Biden uh, leadership. But now that that assumption is being questioned, uh, the market is once again uh, leaning towards, uh, towards growth and tech because uh, Trump is considered a more tech-friendly candidate than Biden. Now, as you've said many times, we're not going to get this blue wave. So let's just um, sort of step aside from the ultimate outcome in terms of the US president. Uh, the fact that the election is very, very close means that the makeup of the House and the Senate are going to be uh, more difficult for either party to get um, much legislation uh, through directly. So. Say Biden wins, but it is um, much closer to call in terms of the election. What's that going to mean for policies and him trying to get those through? Uh, in, in general terms, uh, the composition of the Senate is clearly important for U.S. sectors and obviously for the U.S. economy. Uh, less, much less important for the global implications. So what the new president or uh, the incumbent means for uh, relationships between the United States and China, between the United States and Europe and so on and so forth. But yes, the uh, the Senate's composition does matter for the US, does matter for US sectors, uh, and uh, and that all of the assumptions uh, that, that uh, the market have been, made, have been making uh, have to be reassessed. So I think the scenarios that are opening up now, you know, in light of uh, the data that's available to us, is that whoever the president is, there's going to be a split Congress. Um, and that means that uh, compared to a Biden, slash blue wave scenario where uh, the entire uh, the entire government uh, 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 complex would be would be uh, in democrat hands uh, there would be a lot more compromise uh, so again consensus was expecting very large fiscal deficits under a uh, a blue wave so a biden win in a democrat uh, senate but also under a very unlikely scenario where Trump uh, would win the election and uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the the entire Congress would turn a Republican. Clearly, now these two scenarios are out of the question, uh, and we are left with uh, with a split Congress, whoever the president is, scenario, which would lead probably to, as I said, more compromise, smaller budget deficits, 
uh, and that means that the market will find uh, will find it uh, uh, harder uh, to to uh, to move higher, uh, and uh, and generally there will be more reliance on uh, on monetary policy as opposed to fiscal policy, which we know is kind of uh, reaching the limits of what possibly can be done. All right, Andreas, thank you so much for all of your insights. Great to chat to you. Pleasure. And that was Andreas Shishone, who's the head of strategy at TS Lombard. I'm Victoria Scholar, and thanks so much for watching IGTV. For more videos like these, subscribe to our YouTube channel, IG UK, and make sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at IGTV.